So you're all faced with a new specification and one of the dangers of a new specification is missing those little bitty things that are new to the specification. That's one of the things Mike and I are good at. We're very experienced at decoding a specification. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the models of memory, uh, the multi-store model and the working memory model, which you undoubtedly know very well. But what has come into the specification is naming particular elements of those models. And there is also a requirement in the specification that for the multi-store model, candidates are actually familiar with coding capacity and duration in the multi-store model. So students need to be able to say, for example, for the sensory register, and it is actually named the sensory register in the specification, they would need to be able to say how that information is coded. And actually, I should point out to you that it's not encoding anymore in the specification, it's coding. How that information is coded, which depends on what sense is being used. The capacity of the sensory register, which is huge. So, for example, the human retina has 125 million cells. And so that is an estimate of the kind of capacity we're talking about. And you should also be familiar with the duration, which is measured in milliseconds for the sensory register. And you should be able to do, or rather students should be able to do the same for the other two stores, short-term memory and long-term memory. And it would certainly be acceptable to say, for example, for short-term memory, once you've read our book, you'll see that we say it's probably not the capacity of short-term memory is probably not 7 plus or minus 2. It's probably nearer the lower end of that. So a student could have that kind of discussion when describing the capacity of short-term memory and refer to the research that supports that. So the second model, the working memory model, in this case you don't need to know coding, capacity and duration. You just need to know coding and capacity of all four stores. So those four stores are now named in the specification, which means that you have to cover all four because students could be asked individually about any of the four components. That is the central executive, the phonological loop, the visual spatial sketch pad and the episodic buffer. And they need to know the coding mechanism in each of those, and the capacity. So we've obviously specifically covered those things so you can answer those questions. Um, for example, in terms of the phonological loop, the articulatory process is thought to hold the equivalent of what you could say in two seconds. The uh, visual spatial sketch pad, Alan Badley has written in a fairly recent paper that he estimates that holds about three or four objects. So I've given you a flavour of some of the new things that are in that part of the specification, and in particular the way you have to focus exactly on the wording of the specification.